And the first one we're going to show, though, is against Veselin Topolov. Topolov is white here, so let's flip the board around and look at it from the perspective of today's Grand Master. Um, Joël Lotier. And so here we have E4. This, by the way, was played in the Tilburg Fontis tournament of 1998 in Tilburg, Netherlands. Uh, this particular game was played on October 30th. And it's a Sicilian defense. So pawn to e4, pawn to c5, knight to f3, pawn to e6, knight to d4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn. And here we have knight to f6, knight to c3, knight to c6. This is an interesting move. Knight to b5. Very bold move here. Not real sure what this variation is called with this knight. I think it's the Taimanov variation. But um, pawn to d6 is played. And bishop to f4. So white doing a nice job getting his pieces out of bed. Pawn to e5, bishop to g4. So undoubtedly bishop f4 is designed to provoke, making the d pawn a backward pawn. Uh, so the bishop to g5 is played. Pawn to a6 sends the knight to a3. And I think this is transposed, by the way, to something else now, but you can research all that. Here's a fork threat with b5. Bishop takes f6 and pawn takes f6. So will he leave his king in the center? Is that the idea here? Knight to d5. Bishop to g7. Hello, Bosch. Welcome to the stream. We are looking at Joël Lotier as today's grandmaster. Celebrating his, um, what year did I say he was born? 1973, so this would make him uh, 46, right? 46 years old today. Pawn to C3. Pawn to F5, hitting the center. Pawn takes and bishop takes. All of black's miners now out of bed. Black's king still in the center, white's king still in the center. Black enjoying the bishop pair. And white's bishop still in bed. Knight to c2, bishop to e6. Here comes the light squared bishop after pawn to g3. Any castles? Bishop to b, g2, pawn to a5. White castles to the king's side. Pawn to f5 now. Queen to e2, 
having a look at the bee man how can this be good for black asks DC that's a good question that's a good question well according to the progress bar on the left the evaluation bar it's equal um, so black does have a few concerns here I don't know how much weight the evaluation bar gives to the bishop pair and to the space advantage that black is enjoying at the moment Rook b8 gets his rook out of the view of the bishop and defends the b man. And rook f to d1, getting in line with the queen. So king to h8. There are times when it's clear to me that the king needs to scooch over. This is not one of those times. Um, sometimes the purpose is if he plans to work on this half open G file. That seems like an idea. Yeah, the d5 knight is a bit annoying, but he has no real targets at the moment, and he's contained by the queen. So he can't really deploy anywhere. I'd be more concerned about my undefended knight on the diagonal that my opponent's bishop stands upon. I feel like Black's plan, though, with King H8 is going to be to try to occupy the G file and make a pawn break. And G4 will be a pretty key square. Or I could mean that the Queen's contained by the Knight. I, I understand that. I mean, the Queen is being looked at by the opponent's rook there are some dangers there I'm just saying the knight though he's there has no real targets and he has no real way to encroach further at this time So, I mean, Black has not shown any indication that he's worried about this knight so far. Now another attacker on b5. So b4 is played. And now here comes the next knight into Black's house. And he does have a definite target. So this knight, to me, is more threatening and more ominous than the one in the center. Although the aesthetically, the knight in the center looks better, but... So pawn takes c3, pawn takes c3. Wow. So my guess that he was vacating g8 for his rook is completely wrong. He was vacating g8 for his bishop. That is a curious looking move right there. So, Blazero likes, I'm assuming, knight d to c7. Or do you like knight b to c7? I'm guessing you want to attack this here.
I personally think that would be the better choice. Knight D to C7. Oh, I see. The reason he's vacating the bishop is because of the threat of knight. Right. Knight, knight D to C7. Having a double attack. So with bishop on knight to... Uh, with the bishop here, this creates a double attack. So that was the purpose of moving the bishop to g8. It just seems like such an ugly place to put the bishop. I mean, why not f7, for example? That would be a hard move for me to make as black, personally. <laughs> Suffocate my king. Give my bishop no scope. No real scope. Yeah, I do agree. I think knight c7, knight dc7 still should be played here personally, and it is. So knight to a7, saying if you take me, I'll take you. But bishop to d5 is now played, occupying the now vacant d5. White really using these pieces nicely together. White definitely has better piece coordination here. Vessel and Topolov. How does black win this game? So knight takes knight, knight takes knight. And queen to b6 now. So we have a super attack on the knight with a battery. Seems to me that would invite the other rook to get out of bed and defend and look in the face of the queen. Instead, white played pawn to a4. Rooks love open files. I'm hard-pressed to understand what would have been wrong with Rook A to B1. But who am I to argue with one of the best players ever, Vessel and Tobolov. So Rook to F6 now. Helping to support the backward pawn, giving his rook a little more mobility. Perhaps that rook will make it to the G file after all. Rook to A2. Pawn to F4 is made. And rook A, wow. Did you see the progress bar? Scrooge up to minus three. Rook A to E2 was not liked by the evaluation bar. Well, I don't like what he's doing with that rook anyway. If I had my druthers, that rook would be on the B file. But what is wrong with rook a to e2 or d2 that creates a almost four pawn advantage for black? Let's see if we can find this move. Perhaps it's just to open the file. Let's see if he takes. You've got an open F file that can be worked on. Is that worth three pawns, though? He did play pawn takes pawn. H takes. Now you have an open F file. 
Bishop H6. So that one move seems to be a humdinger. What could be more natural than doubling up your rooks, too? Seemed like a very natural, normal move. I mean, other than I would have rather had targeted the queen and played it to B2, but... Okay, well, now that the bishop is on a diagonal upon which he can move, can you win the pawn and the queen for a rook and a bishop by playing rook takes? Queen can't take on pain of bishop to e3. He did. He played that move. Queen takes... And bishop to e3 was, in fact, played. Oh, wow. So that's a pretty nice combination here. Let's look at it again because it's gorgeous. Let's come all the way back. And this is the real point here, coming back. This is the real point to the problem with rook to e2. It's a fairly natural seeming move to pile up on top of the um, d6 backward pawn. It's fairly natural seeming. But this double clearance move here, pawn takes g, opening not only the f file, but opening the diagonal. Yeah, I got it once I got Lotier's help. Lotier's help. This, I mean, okay, this is a fairly, should be a fairly easy move to find, I guess. I mean, you've got a rook there. You've got a bishop that's not doing anything. Attack it. Now, if that rook is on b2 right now, this is not very significant, or not as significant. I mean, I think he can still threaten this. All things being equal. And you like rook d3 here instead of rook c2. Uh-huh. Well, I think the rook can be deflected, though. You can still get rid of the rook and still play your plan. Let me see. You can still carry out that plan and still win the queen. So rook d3, if the idea is to protect e3, it's not going to work. I, I don't see that there. So anyway, he played this. That was pretty. Right, I mean, he, you're right. He has definitely more activity. Than, um, than the other way. It, it seems that way. I mean, at that point, I think black is winning regardless. Regardless of what uh, resources white tries, I think black is going to win either way from that point. And let's just page through here and see how black finished it off. It couldn't be a gimme. I mean, if, if you just go strictly by material points, it's not a dead gimme. Two rooks and a piece are almost a queen. I mean, a rook and a piece is almost a queen. So you have bishop for bishop, rook for rook, and you have 
knight and a bishop, a knight and a rook for a queen. So, in pure points, that's close to equal. But as you can see by the evaluation bar positionally, first of all, the queen is way more active. And I, I think DC is right. Having your rooks connected would probably be a lot better here. Anyway. Wait, what did he just play? Rook to B1. Now that is clever. And here Topolov resigned. That was a pretty clever move. Saying, here, take my rook. Because then I'm going to give check here. And what are you going to do about it? Pretty, pretty slick. He presumably want to stay protecting his rook. But then you have this. <laughs> Topolov resigned before that could happen. I guess the other choice would be to move into a pin. But then you have this. And you're going to be forced there anyway, so that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, queen out in the open like that with lines of attack. I don't care how many points you have. It's insurmountable, it seems. <laughs>